Now, I know you are like, whoo, into this shit. Mind is blowing up crazy right now. Uh, but uh, what's a compulsory license, okay? Basically, this is a statutory license. This is where the federal government has, uh, has basically come up with, um, you know, um, a royalty percentage and the rules for licensing. It's not determined by, by a company. Um, it exists in both patent and in copyright in some ways, okay? And what a statutory license means is that typically you don't need uh, permission from the owner of the patent or the copyright holder. You do need to notify them and you do need to pay royalties, okay? But you basically provide a notice to the patent holder, you provide a notice uh, to the copyright owner, and there's a set fee based upon sales that you, must, that you must pay, and there's some other specifics of this, and I'll talk about an example here of a compulsory mechanical license. So I'm gonna talk through some licensing types, and on the test, I'm gonna give you some situations, and you'll need to tell us what type of licenses need to be obtained. <coughs> so um, I tend to focus on music here. Uh, that's kind of like my, my area. So a mechanical license. Um, why mechanical for, for, for this? Well, early on when people were recording other people's compositions, think back to John Philip Sousa and his dope ass waltzes and marches and stuff. When people started recording his sheet music, okay, the way that you recorded music was mechanical. You literally etched, um, you know, vibrations into tin or into shellac or other compositions. Um, and it was mechanical, it's called mechanical reproduction. Um, so anyways, a mechanical license, okay, is paid to songwriters, composers, uh, and music publishers the right to make a recording of their, um, of their composition, what's called a musical work, okay? Now, um, this could mean anything from an interpolation, like I sing part of your lyrics in my song, uh, or say one of your lyrics in my song, that's interpolation, or I sample your beat. I sample like um, a recording that you made and you also wrote the music. I have to pay a mechanical license so, uh, for, for the, the songwriting, not the actual sound that's different, and we'll talk about that. So mechanical licenses are for fixing a composition or lyric into a recording that you can hear, okay? There's what's called a compulsory, uh, compulsory mechanical license, right? And this is basically, um, is a government set uh, way for you to do a cover version. So um, a compulsory mechanical license allows you to do a cover version of a song that's already been recorded and put out there. Um, you can do an arrangement, a straight up cover version. It allows you to print copies of the notation or the lyrics for like books or anything like that. It's for any mechanical reproduction of someone's um, song, songwriting or composition in full unchanged. So an arrangement is a tweak, um, but you can't change the lyrics, get a compulsory license and change the lyrics. You can't get a compulsory license you know, and uh, change the, the, the composition, the melodies in the composition or anything like that, okay? So it means that the author's moral rights are, are intact. It's a nine, uh, 9.1 cents uh, on the dollar uh, per copy, so, um, you know, 9% 9, 9 or so, so. And for ringtones, it's 24 cents per, per copy. Um, again, you have to let the publisher know that you're, you're gonna do a cover version uh, but you can't, you really cannot change the meaning of, of the music by changing the lyrics. Now what someone like a parody artist may do is, uh, say Weird Al Yankovic, is Weird Al will get no license to make fun of the lyrics, because that's what he's making fun of, and then he'll get a compulsory mechanical license to do his own recording of the underlying musical composition, because he's not making fun of that per se, um, so you will get one of these licenses. So this is to, to literally to record someone else's composition and do a cover version like that. It has nothing to do with performing a cover version 
um, you know, live in concert. Okay? Listen. My advice is if you want to get into music, get into songwriting. It's where the dough is at. And you don't have to do the bullshit. You don't have to tour. You don't have to be famous. You could just literally be that dude in Sweden who writes like 50% of like American pop music or music that's popular here and doesn't have to leave his lab. Um, and songwriters get paid dough. They get paid in mad different ways, okay? So just so you know, and you don't need to know, know this for like the test, but just so you know, songwriters or composers get paid royalty rights in all these different ways, print rights. Someone wants to um, reprint my lyrics or my musical compositions, uh, I get paid. Uh, mechanical rights, that is if someone wants to do a sound recording of my musical work in some way, whether that's uh, a cover version, whether that's someone samples a sound recording I made with my musical work in it, meaning my lyrics and or my composition that are in that sound recording, they sample it, uh, I, I get paid. Uh, performance rights, yo. Anybody who does a cover version live of my music, anybody, anytime my music plays on radio you hear in your car, anytime, um, you know, my music's played at a bar, anytime my music is played at a dance studio, uh, I, I get paid and, and, and this money's collected by uh, performance rights organi organizations, ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI, and they have some fucking bizarro mathematical equation that somehow figures out, you know, every three months how much money I'm going to get out of all of the people they collect money for. You get paid sync rights, which are if you're, uh, someone uses a sound recording of yours, uh, you know, where you wrote the lyrics or wrote some of the lyrics or the composition, if they use that sound recording in a movie, in an advertisement, in a video game, basically they sync a sound recording with something visual and that sound recording has your lyrics or notation or composition in it, you get paid and you also get digital rights. And digital rights are for uh, YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, um, any digital streaming, uh, you get paid for that too. And Sound Exchange is the, the collection organization, the performance rights organization uh, for, for that as well. So what I say is write motherfucking music, write music, just saying.